Hi, I'm Hugh from SRI, and today we're going to talk about the thermocouple out of range alarm on the front panel of the GC. The thermocouple out of range alarm, we sometimes call it a TORA, T O R A for short, and it's this red light right here which lights up under a number of circumstances. The most common circumstance is this oven maximum setting on the front of the GC. This is the furthest right setting. Right now the oven maximum is set to 60. I can change the oven maximum with a screwdriver, just like with all the other parameters on the GC. So if I change the, the set point to 70, okay. then um, that becomes the maximum temperature that the GC will let the oven heat to, regardless of whether it's just a setting or whether it's happening in reality. So that's one reason why if the temperature of the oven rises higher than the oven max, then this red light should come on. So let's see if that happens. So I'm going to turn the oven temperature up to very, getting very close to 70. See, right there at 70. And now I'm it's a little higher than 70 and this thermocouple out of range light lights. So what happens when this lights is that nothing on the GC is going to heat. So the most common reason is simply that you set the oven temperature hotter than whatever the oven maximum is limiting it to, and that's how it limits it, by turning off something called a relay, which is a big kind of a electromagnetic thing that makes a clunking sound when the lid closes. See if you can hear that on the video. You hear that, that kind of click sound. You can also actuate that big clunky relay manually by depressing this white plunger in the back. The lid hits the plunger on its way down and that's when everything starts to heat. So that's the most common reason why the thermocouple out of range alarm might be on. There's a couple other reasons that require that we really go inside the GC to investigate. So I've removed the six screws around the bottom of this particular GC already so I can tilt it up on its back and I think I'll disconnect this ground wire from the bottom plate just to make it a little easier to maneuver. Put that aside for right now. And then I've, I've got a little bench here that the, with a cushion so that I can tilt the GC up and let it rest kind of in this orientation so that it's easier to take the pictures and it is easier to work on and see. So the thermocouple out of range alarm is located on the circuit board here on the front of the GC that we call the display board. And the display board gives you some place to push a button so you can read the temperature of the oven, you can read the temperature of the various things that are hot. Sometimes there can be more than seven or eight different things that have to be at different temperatures so this provides a convenient place. The way the information, which is just an analog voltage, gets from these circuit boards up to that is via these phone cords, right? So the phone cord is just like on the telephone at home and you just plug it in and it works. But if it's not completely plugged in, if it's halfway out, then the thermocouple out of range alarm lights up, right? Because something's wrong. It's, it's, it's kind of a supervisory circuit that senses when the temperature of any of the things that heat is not somewhere between 5 degrees centigrade and 425 degrees centigrade, right? If it doesn't read somewhere in that range, then maybe the thermocouple is broken, maybe there's something else wrong. But in any case, it's a safety feature that is important. So if something's unplugged, it's not going to heat, but it's also going to cause nothing to heat. So we got if, so the first thing to do, if, if this red light comes on and we're trying to figure out why, is to, is to make sure that all of these phone cords are actually securely plugged in. It's really only the ones in the heat area that are important. The ones that are over here have to do with the gases, the gas controls, and that really isn't related to this thermocouple out of range alarm. It's really only the heat control circuits. But there's something that can happen, um, and it does occasionally, and that's the, one of the chips that does the supervising to make sure that the thermocouple temperature is reading somewhere between 5 and 425. This is, this is one of those supervisory chips. It's called an LM324 chip, sometimes an LM224 chip. We use both. They're interchangeable, almost identical. 
and they fit into these sockets like this with the little legs, right? So there's 14 little legs and you massage the legs into the socket and then when that looks like they're, they're actually in place, then you give it a little push and it goes into the socket securely. That's how you mount these chips. And the way that you remove these chips is that you, you get a, a screwdriver, a kind of a skinny screwdriver, and you try to wiggle it between the socket and the, the chip, and you do it carefully so that you don't bend the legs of the chip if possible, because at the end, if you bend it too much, so you try to kind of pry it out of the socket gently and easily. It, it's, it's easy to do when it's right here. It's a little harder to do when it's mounted in the GC, but this is what you would do, the same thing. You take the screwdriver and you, you kind of wiggle it a little bit to try to separate the chip from the socket, and then you kind of try to wiggle it wiggle it out gently right, and not bend the legs. So if you bend the legs, you can sometimes straighten them out, but it's best to try not to bend the legs. So there it is. I think I've got the chip out. See, I didn't, I didn't bend the legs hardly at all, but I've been doing this a long time. Anyway, if you bend the leg, just try to bend it back with a little pair of pliers or a tweezers or something. And note that on the chip, there's a direction. It matters which way the direction that you insert it is. On every chip, there's some kind of little a dot. I don't know if you can see this tiny little dot on the end of the chip. There's also usually a little semicircular scallop on, near the dot. Sometimes there's just the scallop. Sometimes there's just the dot. Depends on who made the chip. But that's number one, and so it's important which direction it goes in. So when you put the chip back in, make sure you're putting it back in in the same direction that it was when you took it out. So all of these chips here are identical, right? So if, if you couldn't remember which way was which, you could just look and see which way its neighbor was pointing, and you'd know which way to put it in. So when you put it in, you have to have a degree in um, massage because you've got to get all those little legs into the socket. If, if any of the legs are not going in, they're, they're missing, then it's not going to work. So you have to make sure that you got good light, you can see, and then before you really push in, you got to make sure that you do actually have everything in the in the little, the little legs are in the socket before you give it the final little push to go in. So we give you an, an extra one of these chips with the GC. It's in the little plastic parts box under the red lid. And they're very common chips. You can probably find them on Amazon um, for 50 cents each. So they're, they're not hard to find. And if those chips go bad, then it can also cause this red light to light. So if the red light is lit, you would also want to check to make sure that none of the other heaters in this particular GC are lower than 5 degrees centigrade or higher than 425 degrees by pressing the actual button for any of the other heaters that are on this GC. Now, here I'm pressing the, the button for detector 2, which is an FID detector, and it's showing me that it's 124 degrees. So that's fine. That's somewhere between 5 and 425 degrees. So it, that can't be the problem. So it must be something else that's the problem. And so the, the process of diagnosing that is largely a question of re replacing this or switching that in order to see where the problem seems to lead you down the diagnosis path. So thanks for your attention on this. If, if it's not clear after you've kind of done all this and watched this, then give us a call on tech support and we'll kind of troubleshoot it along with you.